Hello and welcome to the conclusion of the 2021 Utah Open driven by Innova. I'm Nate Perkins, joined here in the booth with my good friend and United States champion, James Conrad. Good morning, Nate. I look forward to seeing how this final round plays out. We've got a, an awesome lead card on, on deck today. We've got Ricky Wysocki and Emerson Keith. Ricky's in second, just a couple strokes behind Emerson. And then they're joined by Levi Hancock and Dallad Blanchard. Pardon me, Ricky's just one back. Just one back. And we saw during round two that the fort is not your typical disc golf course. Even players on the lead card still have an opportunity to shoot over par. This is a very tight wooded course. And again, this is gonna be one of the courses that we're playing for the world title. Looking at the Flight Factory Drone Preview here on Hole 1. As we mentioned yesterday, Hole 1 and 2 are some of the better opportunities to score on the course. This hole is about 315 feet with water just behind, behind the basket. And it's a tight green. A lot of players will want to come in from left to right. Good looking forehand from Emerson. And he is just outside the circle. Ricky going with his pig. There seems to be no limit to the distance that he will throw this disc. Very wow. similar to Emerson's shot. I think both players would have preferred to pull that disc a little further left before fading into the right, but they're both up there for a birdie chance. All right, and here's Levi Hancock out of Utah. He's been traveling around on the Disc Off Pro Tour this year with his buddy Cade. Oh no, and that found the creek as well. That is a rough way to start your round here at the fort. And here we have Dallin Blanchard. This is my first time getting a look at his game. He's 1037 rated player out of Idaho. He's played in 47 career PDGA events and he's won 29 of them. So the man can play disc golf. I'm really looking forward to seeing seeing his skill set. Oh, close. Yeah, that is a, an amazing statistic to be to be winning over half of the tournaments you've ever played. So close from Emerson. And that's a common theme out here at the fort is obstructed greens. The greens are pretty guarded and you know we've we've been speaking about this James that the fort isn't necessarily where you're going to be making a lot of distance putts. You're either on the green and pretty close or you really don't have too clean of a look. Definitely a contrast to mulligans where pretty much every hole you're going to have a, a chance to make your putt. There may be more hazards close to the baskets out at Mulligan's, but there's almost never going to be a lot in your way. So it's cool to see that contrast out here. And hole two is a short hole, only 200 feet. It plays as an island green. There's a, a small road just behind the basket and then the water short of the basket. Oh, wow. Great touch from Emerson with that harp. That touch forehand is probably one of Emerson's best shots in his bag. Whoa, and Ricky going with the wide route. And just perfect touch. Dallin trying the same line as Ricky, not quite as successful. He didn't have the height to, to clear that mound. A 
bit inside from Levi. Looks like he was able to stay in bounds and will will at least have some sort of putt for birdie. You can see the flowing river behind Dallin there. In years past, playing here, the river was up much higher, and if your disc went into the water, it was pretty much gone. And the West is uh, in a serious drought, particularly this part of Utah, and the river is pretty shallow this year. You can see all the way to the bottom. A couple really nice birdies from Emerson and from Reiki, and then a couple pars for Levi and Dallin. Alright, so we're headed up the hill for hole three, teeing back down and across the river, 516 feet. We saw huge hyzers from Emerson and Ricky during round two, and Emerson going to the rive for this shot, I believe, switching it up from the Ballista Pro yesterday, and wow, he does not find the green this time, and he finds the OB River. I believe you head straight to a drop zone if you if you throw a B on this one. That's correct. It's not a terribly punishing drop zone. You have maybe a outside circle two chance to save par from there. Huge hyzer with the halo destroyer. That almost stayed too wide as well, but it looks like he was able to catch the bank and he should be up there for a long birdie putt. Dallin opted for a, a little bit of a safer line on that big hyzer. He didn't hang it quite as wide, which makes it hard to actually attack the basket for a circle one putt, but it keeps it a lot safer. Yes. I love Levi's little hop that he has in his X step. Levi is known to throw the disc pretty much as hard as he can every time. This was the drop zone we spoke of, so Emerson just kind of laid that up for an easy four. And is that going to be Emerson's first bogey of the tournament? That is. Emerson was able to go clean out at Mulligan's and clean through the second round out here at the fort. Ricky might actually have a clean putt from the river's edge right there. Oh. Ooh. Might have had a little bit of a, low <clears throat> of a low ceiling, but he put some good spin on it, gave it a good bid. And Dallin with a great effort from about 45 feet. Yeah, he's got great pace on that. Similar to hole one's putt, just slightest bit of wobble, good speed control though. Always frustrating to, to have a fine drive and then just mess up the short approach. I think we mentioned that yesterday, that sometimes those little 80 or 100 foot shots are just as important as your tee shot. And it, it's very important to maintain that focus and to, to really execute every shot out, especially on a course with so much obstacles right on the green. All right, hole four is the single most difficult hole at the fort. 
The landing zone is right at 360 to 380 feet and it is small and very specific. We saw Ricky rip the T-Bird during round two and still almost had nothing. It's playing almost a full stroke over par. It looked like Ricky was a little inside. Dallin with a great straight shot. I do not believe he had the distance to, to really be able to attack from a second shot, but playing playing it short and straight and just playing for that four is a, is a great play out here. Oh, wow, look at this shot. Keep going. Oh, that was so close to perfection. That's still good. I think... I think that might have skipped into the trees on the right without a great lie, and where it hit that tree and kind of curled back to the middle might have actually improved, improved his chances at getting up and down. Smooth, flat to hyzer shot. Yeah, I believe he's playing this one for a four. It didn't look like he got really aggressive off the tee and very conservative second right there. I think that is a great game plan. I think a lot of people playing the world championships could, could learn something from that. Taking an easy four on this hole is going to get you strokes on the field and it is, yeah, it's going to take out the possibility of taking that double bogey here. Ricky from a tough lie was able to really get a lot of distance on that second shot and should set himself up for a chance at par. Ricky, this the scramble master. And Emerson center cut fairway right here. Going forehand second. Oh, so close, Emerson. Just needed a little bit more angle. Wow. Those were two great shots that Ricky was able to execute after a, a tee shot that was out of position. As we were saying, four is great on this hole, so to have a bad drive and then scramble to save that par is doing something special. And Dallin showing us exactly how to play it for par. That was three textbook shots, never outside of the center of the fairway. And Emerson, our last hope for a birdie. He's outside circle two here. Ooh. And we've got to give a shout out to the only birdie in the field during round three, and that was Cade Filamahala. We saw him shoot a 10 down that first round. I don't believe anyone in the field got a circle one in regulation on, on hole four between either round. I think both birdies that we saw were from the circle two range. So that definitely speaks to the difficulty of the hole. Good comeback putt from Emerson. It's always important to make those after running a long birdie putt. Now we're at hole five out here at the fort. This is another challenging, extremely technical par four. The tee shot is asking for a shot moving left to right, going over this down log with the 
with the target on it. And it's, a, again, another specific landing zone. If you're a little short or a little bit long of where you want to be, you're going to have a very difficult time. It's a similar themed hole to the previous hole, and the, and the shape is slightly left to right off the tee, and then and then you know finishing off into the left. Hole five kind of has that late finish to the right. But similar in that if you are off the mark at all, birdie is out of the question and you're just trying to get back to the center of the fairway. Under it? Oh, oh. he nailed the bullseye. <laughs> That was a good line, just a little low. Yeah, the fort has so many unique pieces around the course, such as that bullseye, such as the, the carving that you see um, with hole five in it. The, the attention to detail out here at the fort is pretty special. Wow. Levi hammered that shot, turned it over a little too much, Emerson has become known for his lack of a reach back. He engages his core as much as any player. And he is on line this weekend off the tee. So he's out of position. He's taking the Bruins' justice. Just going to pitch it up around the corner. That was a great golf shot. It can be easy to try to throw a hero-type shot when you're on the fairway, just short of where you want to be. And Emerson did not do that at all. He just chipped it 150 feet around the corner to give himself a good chance at par. Dallin was actually online with the landing zone, just a bit right. And as you can see, his lie was very difficult, but it looked like he was able to make good progress from there. Or was he not? Oops, I thought he got past that. I thought he did too, actually. It looks like he didn't make it very far at all. No. And we've got to note, guys, that a heat wave is in full effect here in Utah. It was 100 degrees on this championship Sunday. Oh, no. Ricky placed his drive. They have a little plaque that says landing zone, and Ricky's drive was within a few feet of that, so he was exactly where he wanted to be, but it's still a lot of little trees in the way trying to approach this basket, so he was not able to capitalize on such an amazing drive. And it looks like the heat wave is not going to stop anytime soon. If you look at the weather for the next 10 days, it is going to be a hot one. And it's definitely going to play a large factor in how these players are able to come out and practice the fort and mulligans and prepare themselves for this world title coming up. Again, he's just got that kind of nose up flutter putt from distance, not going too far if he misses. I have a feeling we're going to see him knock down a couple of those longer putts today. Yeah, they're coming out of his hand looking great. He's been close to the target. Like you said, great speed control on those. And I can't actually recall a tournament playing on these Latitude 64 baskets. 
Can you? I We've played on the veterans before, but this specific branded basket I've never seen before. Not on our Elite Series events anyway. Yeah. To me, they, they play very similar to the, the dynamic disc baskets. Hole six, a tricky par three. I believe the most common route to attack the hole will be going up and over this hill and this bush on the left-hand side. And now it's just slightly too turned. Maybe a little high as well. It's one of those holes where you can't quite see the gap, but you just have to trust that it's there. If you take that ante or that forehand up and over that bushy tree on the hill, there, there is a slot where your disc can funnel through toward the basket. Okay, and we're, we're going to see an overhand from Dallin. Whoa. Uh oh. Well, you don't see too many players throwing a, a overhand like with that trajectory trajectory low like that almost just like throwing a baseball yeah what that was an awesome play from levi he elected to go roller and gave himself a putt rolled right past the pin there's so many trees in the way that's hard to do oh, oh. that looked good the whole way Emerson to take back the lead. Relatively slow start for this lead card. Yeah, none of these players have really been able to get the ball rolling. They, we've only seen a couple birdies so far on the card. Emerson and Ricky were able to get hold two. Oh no! no. He's Emer looked automatic from that range all weekend. Yeah. Sad to see him miss that one. First major mistake from Emerson. Three putting here on hole six. We've been speaking about it all week, James, with with our friend group, with other disc offers, that we really think that it's anybody's game out here for this year's world title. When the PDGA National Tour rolls into town, the action is intense and the competition fire. But every inferno, no matter the size, must begin as a spark. With PDGA sanctioned leagues and tournaments, anyone can get in the game. Fuel your fire. Find an event near you at PDGA.com. Hole seven is the second of three tricky par threes in a row. They've got a new tee pad for us. We're heading up this hill onto this elevated pad that kind of drops off at the end. Ricky just getting the left side of the gap. You can see the gap right there to the right of where his pig just hit. And we're, we're throwing toward the river. So you can't just blast this one. That needs to slow down actually. Oh, okay. Held on. So he's probably 50 feet right of the bucket. You really need something to start hysering well before the river. And then this is one of the more obstructed greens out here. Yeah, there is a lot of challenge to this hole. Not only the, the tee pad that can make you a little nervous, as you're so elevated, but then like you said, that, that field goal you have to hit, and then to get that fade over to the end, over to the basket without going long is challenging. This looks beautiful. Great shot by Emerson. Just to the edge of the circle, it may be a tricky putt with that down tree in front of the basket, but he gave himself a chance. Yeah, it's kind of a fun one. 
putting from short of that log. It kind of frames the basket up for you. And Ricky way out of position. Look how high he's looking. What? Wow. wow. Ricky is seriously the best scrambler that we've seen. That is such a difficult shot. Throwing straight toward the river. And man, Levi is not having a great day. Stop. This is his, at least his second forehand roller of the day. And he's having a tough go at it. Wow. Right off the top of the basket from Dallin. Oh no. Tough circle two miss from Emerson. Not quite getting the putter rolling yet. Even without being able to score, though, he hasn't really lost too much ground yet on, on the card. None of these players, as we mentioned, have really been able to start getting the birdies. Surely shows the challenge of the course, but... Great up and down from Rick. Way out of position. Just spiked it right on top of the basket. Moving on to hole nine, the third of three tricky par threes. This one's asking for a big left to right moving shot. I believe most players will play it kind of just above this Y tree that you'll see in the initial gap. Forehand will be popular, a backhand Anheuser can also work very well. You just can't go too straight as there's out of bounds on the hillside that you see in front of the, in front of the players. Oh, and he makes the Y look like a little too much angle, but wow, look how much power Ricky has. He's gone deep on the pure hyzer line. Oh, that, the disc is really loose in his hand on, on the forehand. I've noticed a couple of those forehands now. It's kind of just resting, and, and, and his wrist is leading it through. He's got good technique. It was a great shot too. He got it nice and high, kind of stalled out and kept it short of the short of the pin. And that looks perfect from Emerson. Wow, nearly hitting the base there. I got a big skip. It landed on the down slope and took a really fast skip. But he will still have a birdie putt. And I believe he's throwing the rive for that shot new royal line <gasps> great approach right there Ricky is not quite connecting on these long circle two putts. We saw him almost flawless from that distance on the opening round out at Mulligan's. And if he could, if he can start making those again, he'll really turn on the heat like Emerson has just done. That was a great putt from Emerson. Gatekeeper rewind, what a great angle. All Heiser. Awesome. Right in the heart. Yeah, it seems to be one of those courses where it's just it's hard to get in a rhythm because like we were mentioning, you don't, you don't have a putt on every hole. We saw Ricky able to just get in that putting rhythm out at Mulligan's and it's just not the same here. Good, good contrast between Mulligan's Definitely. and the fort. Great birdie from Dallin and good scramble from Levi.
whole nine. Massive par five. We have a Mando tree on the left right there. It's about 450 feet away from the tee pad. And then you have 350 to 400 feet into the pin. Highly obstructed approach. We saw Ricky unleash his Halo Destroyer out and around the Mando. Most players, I believe, are trying to nestle one to the right of the Mando tree and then have the angle around. The common miss is to hyzer out too early into that fence. Oh no. We've just seen Dallin and Emerson both pull their drives a little bit to the right, catching early trouble. And Ricky knew right away. No! Wow. What a kick. It almost made it around, James. No way. Yikes. Levi just a little off the mark today. And it's hard to beat a Ricky Wysocki slow-mo. Look at the angle of the disc in his hand before he starts pulling through. I always find it so interesting. He get he really curls up and gets a ton of snap on the disc and then his follow through is not exaggerated at all. It, it's almost, he just really spins the disc so hard. He's not really launching him his own body into the throw at all. It's, it's really a cool throw. Yeah, a little bit different than your own style, huh? Just a tad. <laughs> that's, you know, that's what I've always thought made disc off so special is the creative style of each individual there's no there's no exact way to do it there's there's some similar technique in in the footwork and the hips and everything but the actual way that you spin it out of your hand everyone seems to do it different and we're getting a good look at what this mando does to this hole if you don't make it at least to the Mando, you have no angle and you have to get tricky. Levi trying to throw the forehand Annie, Ricky trying to throw the, the forehand roller. It, it's easy to get out of position on this one. Very easy. This hole is short enough though that even, even if you are out of position like that and you have to throw kind of a trick shot or a short second shot, there's still a chance to get up and down for that birdie four. And here is Ricky's third. He's probably got a little less than 400 into the pin. Just shy. The basket rests behind that big mound we just saw. So if he was able to get that dry, that approach a little further or a little farther left before fading out, it would have been ideal. Dallin taking the right gap in towards the basket. I believe most players will, will prefer this left line that Emerson is lining up. But there's also a backdoor option. You can kind of come in from the right of the basket and come around the other side of that hill. A little bit of a misfire there from Emerson. He had a pretty clean look at the basket and comes up short on that hillside. He's going to have a tricky putt. Oh! And that that's a really interesting putt because you can't quite see the basket on that one. He might have been able to see the top, but... Probably just the flag, if I had to guess. It's a, a really large mound. Okay, and Emerson getting a good look, but... Yeah. Oh, he drops it in there for par. This is a wild course to, to play on, but even more so to watch. I mean, everyone played this hole different. Seemingly every hole has been played different. Yeah, it's, we've seen quite a few forehand rollers. We've seen some spike hyzers over the top. There's just all kinds of scramble shots that are required out here. It is not very predictable, that's for sure. This will wrap up our front nine. 
Ricky Wysocki and Emerson Keith tied for the lead. We saw Ricky was the only player on our card to get under par on that front nine. He had eight pars with one birdie on hole two. And Kyle Klein shooting five under on the front. That is setting the pace there, and he's only three strokes back of the lead. From the chase card, Kyle is definitely making a move. Let's see how these guys can attack the back nine. Hopefully they can clean it up a bit.